thank you uh, if you're back again. Uh, last video, we went over general networks, network attacks. That was definitely a lot of fun. Again, the scope that I'm looking to get into a particular to our security. Uh, but what we're going to touch over today is a little bit of lab topology, some remote access network services, just remote network device configuration as well. Now, there are many different network services and protocols that exist today and are used on a daily basis, of course. For example, if you're accessing a web page, you're actually using the HTTP or the HTTPS network protocol. If you're sending an email, you're using the SMTP protocol. I'm going to go a little bit of, uh, uh, more in depth on these kind of things, right? So installing and configuring FTP server roles, uh, access share folders, PFSense firewall, uh, using that protocol, uh, enabling remote logging server uh, option on PFSense firewall and things of that nature. So we're going to look to have a lot of fun on this video. Uh, so we're actually going to get started with <clears throat> remote access network services. So... Um, we're going to uh, go over installing and configuring DNS, DHCP, a dynamic host control protocol, and FTP file transfer, and other well-known services, right? So, I mean, we could talk about connection list versus connection-oriented, but I, I want to uh, actually get straight to, to what we're here to do today. So, first, we're going to install and configure FTP server role on Windows Server. Now, typically, the FTP is used to copy or transfer files between hosts, usually the file server and the file client. Now, it is a TCP-based protocol and uses two ports, and TCP-20 is used for data transfer, actually, and TCP-21 is actually used for connection uh, control. And it's not a procure uh, secure protocol since the data is sent in clear text format. In practice, the SFTP uh, should always be used instead of regular FTP because FTP runs over secure socket layer and enables encrypted data transfer. And it also is a um, TCP protocol and uses port 22. All right, so as you can see, I'm adding some roles and features here to begin um, our installing and configuring. All right, so let's actually go ahead and hit next, and next again, and next again. And let's see, no, nothing here. Okay, I guess nothing anywhere. It doesn't want to come up for me. <clears throat> All right, perfect. So we're on, finally, we're on select features. Um, let's see. Um, actually, let me go back here because I was looking for it to be nowhere else. Um, actually, web server here. All right. Yeah. And the next. All right. Then we could do FTP server here. All right. And then install. All right, so now that's completed, we can go ahead and close this out so I can configure FTP server in passive mode. Uh, so let's actually, let's go here. IIS manager, let's actually make this a bit bigger. I want to open this up here, open that up there, All right? I'm actually going to, <clears throat> uh, I guess it's not gonna open up like I want, that's fine. Let's find the FTP firewall supports. There it is. All right, perfect. Now we're going to do, um, this is selected to specify the port range for passive mode. So for the data channel port range, we're going to do something like this. And then we're going to hit apply. It's going to give me a nasty, a little mess, not nasty, but a little mess to say, hey, we need you to do something if you want to do this. But I'm going to ignore it. So that's fine. So let's actually exit out of here and let's actually open up another application. <clears throat> Services. Okay. And now we're looking for Microsoft FTP service. Uh, there it is. Uh, restart. Right. Perfect. So the restart is complete. So I can exit out of here and then open up firewall, our defender. 
here. Then settings. Inbound. I actually want a new rule. Um, populates for me. There we go. We want to set to port. And we want specific ports. So we're going to do 20. 21, perfecto. All right, so we got our specific particular ports. Let me make sure TCP, yeah, we're good there. All right, perfect. So um, I'll allow the connection, that's fine. Domain, public, private, that's fine. Uh, the name, we want it to be FTP passive as I mentioned before. Then we're going to finish, All right? So now I'm actually going to create a folder. Let's see here, create a new folder here, All right? Simply just FTP. So I'm going to name it, All right? Then I'm actually going to go inside the folder, and we're going to do a new document. And we're going to name it test, All right? And then we're actually going to put something in it. All right, perfect. Let's save it, of course. Let's get out of here. And we're actually going to um, bring this back up. Okay, up here. That's fine. I was looking for the IIS manager. I can bring it back. That won't be an issue. All right, let's so open this up here. Open that up just to make sure we can see it. All right, perfect. So, <clears throat> add an FTP site. I'm going to name it my site, of course, or Dite. You know, that's, that's your thing. But, uh, we're gonna click here and naturally we're gonna go to the FTP folder that I just created. All right. <clears throat> now we're gonna hit next. Now for this one, we're going to do no secure socket layer. All right, and we want let's see. The port it's fine. Um, no secure socket layer, we're good there. All right, and anonymous is fine. And then we want anonymous users. And we want them to be able to read and write. This is completely unrealistic, but nonetheless, this is my lab. <laughs> so again, this is this is a basic setup without any security implemented in a real time environment. Proper security measures would definitely be in place. But now I'm actually going to test the FTP connection, and I have to swivel over to Win Ten to do so. And I'm going to open up File Explorer as soon as it opens up, so we can see. Um, so we can test it here. <clears throat> So let's do this guy here. That's definitely not that will happen. Okay, perfect. So we can clearly see that um, I've successfully accessed the test document created earlier via the FTP protocol. How do I want to open this? Um, why wouldn't it be Notepad? No, um, you can use a, like a, but outside of this in particular, you have Trivial File Transfer Protocol, TFTP, uh, for tra file transfer, it's a UDP based protocol. It uses port 69, or you can use access shared folder using SMB protocol, which we'll touch on in a minute which is using computer networks for file sharing and it enables different use applications to use shared network resources and open and edit shared files. So actually, instead of waiting for this, I'm actually gonna close this out and we can actually get into that. 
So let's swivel back over to DM01 and actually open this up here. All right, and then we're just gonna create a new folder. Gonna be my share. Um, <clears throat> should be pretty straightforward. And then we're gonna do properties, All right? Sharing, that sharing, share this folder. All right, and permissions to full control by K. All right, I'll make sure everything is right. <clears throat> Okay, we're good here. Then the path. Okay, one my share. Actually, let me copy that. I may use it. All right, so we can actually close Buddy out. All right. And now we're going to swivel back on over to Win 10, open up File Explorer. I don't think it'll work here for the paste, but no, it does not. That is fine. Okay, so now we do have access to the MyShare share folder, even though it's, it's empty, uh, but everyone has full control on this folder and I can actually create a new text document, which I'm going to showcase, illustrate now, right? So it's going to leave it, uh, leave it as is, but I'll put something in it. Okay, save, All right, close it, close it. All right, and then I can swivel back over to DM01. And let's see, let's open this up here, my share. And look at that, what do you know? The uh, text document I just created and the contents within that text document as well that I entered. Um, but nonetheless, uh, we can actually move forward now that you see that uh, we were able to share those documents. All right, and let me exit out of all of these wonderful windows here, and I'm actually going to open up PowerShell. So let's do, so what I'm doing now is checking the enabled SMB version on the server. All right, I always want to run it as the admin. So um, let's do this here. Okay, let's see what we got. All right, perfect. From the so from the output, it could be saying that SMB um one is version one at least is disabled. So let's see if version two is enabled. So let's do this here. Perfect, so it is enabled. So when SMB version two is enabled on the Windows server and version three is also enabled because they use the same stack. Now we could get into um, access PFSense firewall using secure shell protocol. Now Telnet, right, and, and secure shell, they're, they're TCP protocols, right? and they're used for remote access to network devices or hosts like Linux machines. And uh, Telnet works on TCP port 23 and it's unsecure, right? Because it transferred data and clear text. On the other hand, Secure Shell works on port 22, which is, which is secure because communication is encrypted. So, and it's widely used for accessing network devices and Linux hosts naturally, right? So I'm gonna do a few things here. Um, let's see, is this the best one? Okay, so 
right, perfect. All right, so let's take a look here. Yes, we do. Uh, I was expecting that. Okay, perfect. So I've successfully connected to the PFSense firewall and I have access to the different configurations options here. Now, this is the same output I would see if I have a console connection to the PFSense firewall, but once you're connected to the to this firewall, there are options to set the interface IP address, reboot the system, access the shell, restore factory default setting, and a few other things, right? So I'm actually going to close this out. And um, we can actually um, get into examining and configuring the DNS server on a domain controller. Now, the DNS uh, server <clears throat> as a network service that translates domain names to IP addresses and DNS works mostly on UDP port four, uh, 53, but can also work on TCP port 53. Now, DNS is used on the internet and in private networks, and in our lab environment, the one that I'm using now, DC01, the server I have now, is the domain controller for practice for our, our lab, the DNS server, and all computers are registered to the DNS, hence they can be accessed by their name. So what I'm gonna do is examine the DNS configuration settings and how it works. And I'll also examine basic DNS settings related to lookup zones, DNS forwarders, and also check how DNS resolves names to IP addresses. So with that being said, naturally I would go directly to DNS, right? So let's go through DNS by way of the server manager. We're actually going to take a look here, right? And let's expand that. Now notice there are forward and reverse lookup zones. And forward lookup zones, they enable us to actually resolve the domain name to IP addresses. And um, while reverse lookup zones, they do the opposite. They resolve the IP address to the resource name, right? So just going to right click here and we're going to take a look at the properties. Now, um, now it has, you know, different things like listener IP address, <clears throat> forwarders, root hints, and debugs, right? And you can, if you want, if you have a chance to do this, you can go through each tab and view the options that are available. For today, we're gonna to look at the forwarders tab, right? Now for the internet access, uh, the internal server must be able to contact the public DNS server for examples, Google's DNS. You can notice that the 192.168.1.1 uh, is set as the IP address of the forwarder. So now I'm just gonna add Google's DNS server to the forwarders list, right? So it's gonna do that by typing four eights. <clears throat> Hitting okay. Then I'm gonna do it again with two eights and two fours. All right, then I'm going to hit OK. Now, from the output, it can be, it, it was seen, let me actually go back, it can be seen that the servers, excuse me, that the servers are validated as OK, as you get um, usually this sort of thing unable to resolve, just because this server has no access to the internet, right? So I'm actually going to close that out. I'm actually going to keep the DNS manager open. Actually, let's expand the forward lookup zones, right? And what we'll notice is that we only have forward lookup zones for the practicelabs.com domain. Now, <clears throat> let's take a look at this one here in particular, right? And I see that these, these, these computers are registered to the DNS, and these names can be resolved by any client that uses the DC01 as a DNS server. Um, I also want to note that there is no record for the Kali Linux um, server as well. But uh, we've taken a look at this enough, so I'm going to swivel back over to Win10. I'm actually going to look at the uh, command prompt here to take a look at a few things. All right, so now I'm just going to test the DNS to see if it will be resolved to the IP address. So I'm just going to ping it. Right. And from the output, it looks like it can be seen that the name, the DM01 practice labs, is resolved to the IP address in the N0.3. So now I'm going to paint the Kali Linux. Okay. Now it looks like the, the name for Kali Linux could not be resolved. So this, this forces me to switch 
So I'll go back over to DCO1, back to the D, um, the DNS manager, right? So I'm going to do a new host for a, a quadruple A, and I'm actually going to name Cali here. And I'm going to name it that IP, and we're going to add the host. And Cali has successfully been created. So I'm actually going to close this out and swivel back over to Win 10, right? And then I'm going to ping Cali. <clears throat> and look at the messages, right? So now we see that the name is now resolved to the IP address ending in 0 0.4, right? So now we can actually go ahead with configuring the dynamic host control protocol server on PM sense firewall. Now the, now the DHCP automatically assigns an IP address to a host with the default gateway and other network parameters such as the DNS. Now, if you do not have a DHCP server in your environment, you will need to manually assign an IP to every host. It sounds like the worst thing. <laughs> sounds like the worst thing on earth. Honestly, now this can be time consuming. You can have a network with 100 or even 1,000 PCs. You're goddamn right. Um, so um, let's actually open up our control panel. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Now let's take a look at our network internet. And let's actually view the network status. Okay. Now, as we can see here, right, that the Win 10, the server now has two network interface cards. One is the Ethernet domain network and the other is the public network, which is Ethernet 2. I'm actually gonna select this one here. Let's take a look at the details. Now, I'll notice that um, I don't have, I don't have a valid IP address on this interface. However, the dynamic host control is enabled, All right? So I'm actually, let me close this out and let's take a look at Microsoft Edge. Now let's take a look at something. Okay, of course we're gonna continue, All right? Get in here. All right, so let's take a look at our services and our GCP server. And we'll want to look at the wide area network. All right, so we're going to enable the DHCP server for the wide area network. And let's actually take a look at this range. Let's do that. That one. Uh, let's take a look at the other stuff here. Okay, so we need some DNS service. So we can do the four eights, and we can do two eights, two fours. All right. Now, so the the quad the quad eight is the primary DNS. And the double eight, double four is the secondary, right? So let's take a look here, see what's going on. Now I noticed that, let's see, the default gateway is to use the IP address of the interface of the firewall on which I enabled uh, DHCP, which is the one in the end 0 0.1 in the lab. So I'm actually gonna leave that empty. Um, so, that being said, I'll actually just save this. <laughs> right, so as you can see, I got that the changes have been applied successfully. All right, so I'm actually going to let's take a look here again. All right, now let's actually disable this. All right, so it's kind of like a restart what I'm doing because I'm disabling it to enable it again. Right, now let's take a look at the status and of course the detail status. So now, <laughs> not gonna say it looks like a complete overhaul, but it's the closest thing to it, right? 
So I'll notice that I've received an IP address from the configured DHCP server, right? At the very least, right? So let's actually close all of this wonderful, all these wonderful things out. So now <clears throat> let's take a look at something here. Let's actually go back to the main page. <clears throat> And actually, you know what? Let me go back. Let's actually uncheck this. Now let's remove the remove this here. <clears throat> Pretty much removing everything I just did. Okay, let's save this. All right, perfect. So we're good there. Let's actually take a look again. Let me actually go back to the channel. Okay, I think again, pretty much again, a rough restart, if you want to really call it that, right? So now we can actually get into some remote network device configuration. Now, uh, we're going to go over different protocols like HTTP, NTP, RDP, SIP, and I'm going to configure different features on the PFSense firewall, um, um, like uh, NTP server, uh, remote logging, an integrated firewall with Active Directory. So I'm just going to go over different databases and the services, long story short. So first, we're going to configure PFSense as an NTP server network time protocol um, server. Um, it's used for clock synchronization, right, between an NTP client and an NTP server, and it uses UDP protocol for uh, 123, typically. So now that we're back at PFSense here, uh, make sure this is the... Yeah. All right. So let's actually go to NTP here, since that's what we're focused on. So I'm going to select the, um, the I'm going to enable actually the NTP server while all the requ all requests will arrive. This is usually the LAN interface, but I'm going to actually choose the WAN because this interface is in the, um, is in a network where all other servers are, right? So just to give you an idea of why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I'm actually going to start with here under the time server. It's just going to add these here. I'm actually going to put you guys on the other side of this so you don't have to watch me type. So I've created all three uh, time servers. So now I'm just going to hit save here. Right. So now I'm now ready to specify uh, the IP and the N0.1 as the NTP server on my devices. Having accurate time on my device or any device really is especially useful for troubleshooting and log messages, right? So now I'm going to take a look at enabling remote logging server um, at that option on the PFSense firewall. Now, system logging uh, or syslog is used to send different log and event messages to the remote server. That is the syslog server. It uses UDP as a transfer protocol in port 161. And it's also a monitoring protocol because it centralizes logs from all devices in one place, right? So let's actually take a look here <clears throat> um, at our system logs. And <clears throat> let's take a look at our settings. And let's take a look at our remote logging. We're actually going to enable this, right? And then from source, we still want it to be WAN. So we can remain congruent across the board, right? And we want it to be system events, DNS events, and DHCP dynamic code control protocol. And of course, we need to tell it where we want the log, right? So there we go. Uh, IPv version 4 is just fine where it is. 
and we're gonna save these settings here, right? Now, after, after applying these settings, the log messages can be sent to the remote server. And in case there is only secure shell or con console access to a device, for example, a Cisco router, I would use the command logging 192.168.0.4. So let's actually close that out. And I'm going to actually integrate, uh, swiveling over to DC, integrate PFSense firewall with Active Directory using LDAP protocol or lightweight directory access protocol, right? Which is used by different software like Open LDAP, Microsoft Active Directory, and you know some of the software to authenticate on uh, authorized users. And it runs over two ports: TCP, UDP, three eight nine, which is unsecured and unencrypted. Led six thirty six, which runs over secure socket layer, is secure and encrypted. So <clears throat> let's actually start here with our command prompt. And it's right here, and then let's let's do a net stats. Right. So we're listening to all the open ports. And I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to stop it and then I'm going to check to see if 389 and 636 are open. Okay, I don't think I could do 389. I mean, um, 636, uh, 389. There you go. And then six. I don't think I, I listened that long. Oh, well, maybe I did. Oh, I don't know why. Almost. And six thirty six. All right. Actually, let me see because those are UDPs. Listening, listening, okay, all right, that's fine. So let's actually open this up here. We're gonna, we're gonna head back to the site. <clears throat> Perfect. So let's actually take a look at our user manager here. All right. Let's take a look at our authentication servers and we're actually going to add some things. All right. So let's add DC01. And let's see. We need this here for DC. All right. For our, our IP address um, field. Round out and actually let's go to I'll uh, stick to this one here. I'm actually gonna to need to paste this in a second. All right. <clears throat> okay. So we don't want that and for the user. Perfect. And we want Microsoft. I forgot where it was. Um, name, which is fine. Let's actually save this. <laughs> Perfect. So we see this now here, DC01. So we're good there, right? It appears. So now I'm just going to create a um a, a new user in Active Directory. So it's actually I'm going to minimize it so I don't have to log back in. 
Um, let's do that here. Here. Target perfect users. This is pretty straightforward, right? And then the F sets. And then use the log on. They're going to keep that pretty simple. So we're going to do next. Actually, I'm going to uncheck that most definitely. Okay. Perfect. So we're finished and we're good to go. And we can see the user who the creator user is now there. So I actually restored this. Let's take a look at our diagnostics for our authentication. All right. And let's see, DC1. What? Hmm. Let's test. Authenticated successfully. So we're good. We're we're perfectly good. I love green. So now that I've integrated my firewall with the Active Directory using the LDAP protocol, um, I, I'm going to use the Active Directory for PFSense authentication. And to do this, I'm going to need to enable the Active Directory authentication under systems and user manager settings. All right. So um i'm not actually i was going to do it but i'm actually not i will actually want to pivot over to using remote desktop protocol uh for remote connection um so i'm actually going to swivel back over to win 10 and let's do mstc msts actually but remote desktop i mean it's pretty simple i've done this on numerous videos um prior to this one, numerous. All right, so let's actually log in. And this is pretty straightforward, now connected to DC01 over the RDP protocol, all right? And as you as you just saw it in, you know, it had our, our remote that was officially connected and, you know, just to verify, you can see up here and you can see down here as well. Even though I'm in Win 10, I'm, remote it into DC01. You can, I mean, we could get into session initiation protocol, internet control message protocol, IPsec, AH, GRE tunnels, which I done a video on as well. Well, well one drawback I just wanted to say, I know this is sort of brand of, of IPsec uh, VPN tunnels that it only supports unicast, it doesn't support multicast. If, if a routing protocol needs to be used over IPsec, I'll need to use GRE tunnels. GRE uses IP protocol number 47, which again, I did a video on that prior to today. Uh, but nonetheless, this is the end of the video. Now for a brief recap, one of our few things, uh, overall remote access network services, remote network device configuration, we installed, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, we installed and configure FTP server roles on Windows and access PFSense, share folders, using SMB protocol, secure shell protocol, examine and configure the DNS server and a few other items as well we touched on, which were really fun actually. And uh, it's gonna be even more fun on the next video, we'll be going over network command line tools. I'll see you there. Stay curious, stay secure.